You're in the water loop. <laughs> I'm here in Gresham, Oregon at their wastewater treatment facility. Very excited to take a tour. This is one of the very few facilities in the US that is net zero, meaning they're producing enough electricity and energy to offset what they need to use. Gonna go around and learn how they've made this possible. Before starting, I wanna tell you about this episode's sponsor, Flume Utility and Business Solutions. I have a flume system at my house to track water use in real time and show me what's happening on my smartphone. Flume also provides crucial insights to water providers and state and regional planning agencies, enabling them to conserve water, stop leaks, plan for the future, comply with regulations, and so much more. Flume is partnering with leading water utilities across the country, such as the San Antonio Water System, Orange County Municipal Water District, and East Bay Municipal Utilities District. Flume's nationwide network of sensors collect residential water use data at five second intervals. It provides detailed analysis of how water is used indoors and out, even down to the fixture level. To learn more, visit flumewater.com and please reach out to their team at partnerships at flumewater.com. You're in the water loop. So Jacob, thanks for having me here at the City of Gresham Wastewater Treatment Facility. I hate saying wastewater sometimes because no water should, is a waste, right? Right, right. But uh, I'm excited to learn about this facility being net zero. Um, could you kind of give the overall summary of, of that and what that means? Here at the City of Gresham Wastewater Treatment Plant, we produce more power than we consume on an annual basis. And we do that through a couple means. So we run co-generator engines that uh, take the biogas from our anaerobic digestion process and run that through some treatment and then run it through the engines which produce power. Mm. On top of that, we also have a solar array at the south end of our facility that produces between five and 9% of our annual power consumption annually as well. Mm -hmm. And we uh, meet regularly in order to make sure that we're keeping our consumption as low as possible. So process optimization and all those types of things get played into that. Yeah, so it's not just coming up with these renewable sources of energy, right? Like the biogas or the solar, it's energy efficiency and, and everything in your processes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we've done a lot of projects to do that. Uh, our co-generator engines also produce heat and so we utilize that heat in the winter to heat buildings and to uh, heat our anaerobic digestion process. But the real thing that has allowed us to get to our net zero goal was the implementation of our FOG program. So what we do is we take fat oils and grease uh, contracting with haulers that pump those out from food service establishments, uh, grease interceptors. And in doing that, they bring it here, they pay us a tipping fee mm -hmm. and they're able to dispose of that on site. And then we get the beneficial reuse. So when you put fog into an anaerobic digestion system, you increase the biogas production of that system. So with the addition of fog, we doubled our biogas, uh, production and we're able to install a second cogen, which brought us to that net zero goal. This is one of the few facilities in the country, you know, water facilities that's really net zero. What's that mean to, to the city of Gresham and to the people that work at the utility? Oh man, it's, it's, it's a big thing. Um, so we save essentially 450 to $500,000 a year in energy costs. So what usually is a huge energy sink for a city in a wastewater treatment facility, we are able to turn that on its head and be a essentially net positive facility there where we produce more energy than we consume and then we don't have to pay a bill for it. Yeah, that's, that's huge, yeah. I, a lot of people don't realize that for a city, for municipalities, like that water treatment piece can be like 30 or 40%. I think that's like the national number, mm -hmm. like 30 or 40% of a city's energy kind of consumption is from the water treatment piece. So if they can knock that out, that's, that's huge. Are you hearing from others, other utilities too that want to learn about how you've got to this balance point? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we regularly 
uh, talk with other facilities. They are asking us what we're doing and how uh, we can potentially help them to tread a similar path. Mm. Right. And yeah. so it's just about, you know, understanding what the needs of your facility are and putting forth a plan to get there. I mean, Gresham is pretty unique in the fact that we've been doing cogeneration since the 90s. Is a community aware that they have a unique facility? Yeah. When the facility went online, um, there was a huge uh, PR piece. I wasn't here at that time, but uh, we still have videos and whatnot of the, we call it the net zero hero, uh -huh. right? And so we had a whole big event. We had little uh, face placards made. So all the kids really enjoyed it. And yeah. it was a really good piece for public outreach to make sure that everybody knows the work that we're doing down here. Yeah. Um, for you as, you know, as someone that's working at a facility, like what's, what's that like to actually work at a facility that is so kind of on the forward edge? Uh, it's, it's great. I mean, we're constantly pushing the envelope, right? So we, we don't just want to rest on our laurels and, mm. and accept what we have now. We're pushing the boundaries we're seeing, you know, cause treatment is going to increase. We've got to do more. Um, and so in order to stay net zero through all this process, we've got nitrification improvements and stuff that we're working mm. towards. Um, so in order to stay on that cutting edge, we're looking at food waste digestion, uh, hmm. with an increase of cogeneration capacity as well as potentially RNG. Okay. So renewable natural gas is another option for us because um, we're kind of in a net metering. So anything hmm. that we produce over what we consume isn't a huge benefit to us hmm. other than uh, on the in-between months. So at the end of the net meter year, uh, if we produce more than we consumed, that just goes into a bucket that uh, does help out the, uh, it gets subsidized, I guess, is it subsidizes rates for uh, low income folks in the area. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, like to walk around and, and see some of these features that help you guys be net zero. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So here we're standing right in front of our digester building complex. So behind me, you'll see our primary digester. Uh, over to the to your right will be our secondary digester and directly behind me is the gas treatment system. So uh, when people think about wastewater treatment, they think about all of the water that you treat. But that water produces solids and those solids need to be treated as well. So Gresham uses anaerobic digestion, which just means that the system is without oxygen. And so what that does is it cultivates very specific types of bacteria that are geared towards breaking down that organic material and then producing CO2 and methane as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. And so what we do here at Gresham is to take that biogas, that methane, and we run it through a treatment system, then into our cogens in order to produce power. One of the things we really like to do is have a snapshot at any point in time of how much power we're consuming versus how much power we're producing. Right now the cogens are off, so you see power produced is at zero, uh, just for regular maintenance, but uh, often we'll track those and you'll see that the power produced is sometimes double, sometimes about 50% more than what we're, uh, what we're consuming. Other things we have are nice pages that allow us to see process variables for the engines themselves. So looking at our jacket water loops and making sure that those are all in line with what we need in order to keep the cogens happy, as well as the ability to see what's going on at the gas treatment skids. And of course, the big thing that allows us to do it all is our, uh, is our fog system. So this allows us to see what's going on out there, uh, what haulers have delivered for the day, as well as adaptive scheduling in order to make sure that we are metering in fog in a way that doesn't upset the digester but keeps things rolling on a regular basis, but is also making sure to make enough room for the next day's delivery so we can be efficient with our space. So here we have our uh, fog receiving system. So behind me is our larger of our two tanks. Uh, 
The total system volume is 30,000 gallons. So we have a 12,000 gallon tank that was installed first. This one was installed with phase two, which is 18,000 gallons. And then you'll see throughout there's an array of piping, pumps, and other uh, pieces of equipment and instrumentation that allow us to monitor the conditions of the system. You know, on a minute by minute basis, you may be producing more gas than you can run through your systems. So what that would mean if we didn't have a flare is that we'd be storing pressure, right? And that is a no-go for a system with no oxygen. So once you get up to a certain pressure, you get to the point where you're stressing the, the, the facility there and you put yourself in a, in a bad place. So this allows us to burn that off and uh, continue to keep our pressures in line with where we need to. Here we have our solar facility. So that is a 419 kilowatt array. Uh, as I stated before, it produces about five to 9% of our annual power consumption. And we have this here with a power purchasing agreement with a uh, provider that essentially they own the panels, we lease the land to them, and then buy the power back at a pre-prescribed rate. Thank you for listening to the podcast, and thanks to this episode's sponsor, Flume Utility and Business Solutions. Please check out Flume. To find all episodes, sign up for email updates, and connect on social media, visit waterloop.org. You're in the Waterloop. Waterloop, Waterloop, Waterloop.